If you look around, there are a lot of items you can measure. So how does one system of measurement measure all this stuff? Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science and the Metric System. Measurements have been a part of our lives for a long, long time. In fact, one of the first civilizations to record measurements was Egypt. In Egypt, rods or bars of exact length called standards were kept in temples for basic measurement. The basic unit of length was the cubit, which was about the span from your elbow to your middle finger. However, over time there was a problem. Different countries or towns had their own unique measurements. For example, in Britain you could measure mass using a slug, yes, a slug, which was equal to about 32 pounds in the United States. This became very confusing and frustrating. So as a result, the International System of Units, abbreviated SI, was established in 1960 by the General Conference on Weights and Measurements, and its goal was to create an international system of measurements. It is commonly referred to today as the metric system. Actually, the metric system has been around for much longer, but for the most part, the term metric system refers to an SI unit. I will attempt to make take something that can be very confusing and simplify it. First, the metric system is a decimal system. Decimal base means that all the units are based on powers of 10. Next, there are the base units depending on what you are measuring. And then this is combined with a system of prefixes. It can be a beautiful thing. Let's begin with the fact that the metric system is decimal base, 3,000 meters, which equals three kilometers. So you are moving the decimal to the left or right depending on if you're getting bigger or getting smaller. So why is this important? It just makes conversion within the system easy. Next, we're going to focus on the base units and then the prefixes. Up first, the base units. I call them the big seven because the SI system is built around these units. They are meter for length, kilogram for mass, second for time, ampere for electric current, kelvin for temperature, mole for the amount of substance, and candela for how bright a light is. Now the next units are called derived units because they use the base units in a formula. For example, the unit for area is a derived unit. In order to calculate area, you multiply length times width. Therefore, the unit is a square meter. It uses a base unit in a formula. Here's a partial list of derived units. There are 22 derived units. Now finally, we have accepted units. For example, in almost any high school science lab, you will measure volume using liters. Liters is an accepted unit that be, can be used with the SI units. In other words, it is accepted in most papers and journals, but it's not a base unit of the SI. Here's a list of some accepted units. Next, you combine the units with prefixes. Many of you have heard King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. This is used to remember the prefixes kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, centi, and milli. These are examples of prefixes. For example, if I'm measuring distance, the kilometer can be used for larger measurements like the distance across the state of Georgia or a millimeter can be used for smaller measurements because it's about the height of a credit card. However, there are even bigger and smaller prefixes. Take a look. Now, most of them are rarely used, but the beauty is that you can take almost anything in the universe and there will be a prefix that can measure it. So in summary, you have a unit that you use as a base on what you're measuring. Combine this with a prefix, depending on the size, and everything is based on the powers of 10. Thanks for watching, and Moo Moo Math uploads a new math and science video every day.
please subscribe and share.